It's the newest and smallest 7.9 inch Intel Z8500 tablet on the market, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2, Windows Edition. Hello everyone, today we have a very interesting tablet in this package, the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2. Now, as I mentioned in my previous ThinkPad review, if you're looking for a high-end 8-inch Windows tablet, there's not that many choices on the market. There's, uh, in the new Cherry Trail generation, there's a new HP, there's a Dell, and there's really just this as your third choice. Now, as opposed to my earlier review of the Tetlast, which was a cheap Chinese tablet, this is what's described as a premium Chinese tablet, so I guess we'll see. Um, the Mi Pad 2 comes with a Cherry Trail Z8500 CPU, which is uh, quite a bit faster than the Z8300 you get in most of the other uh, similar tablets. Uh, it comes with 64 gigs SSD, which is better than the normal 32. And it has two gigs of memory, which is actually a little on the low end. I would have really liked to have seen four, uh, like the HP and Dell have. But maybe they'll come out with a pro version or something. But for now, it's got two. Um, it also has a 7.8 or 7.86, 7.9 inch uh, Retina resolution screen, just like the HP and the iPad Mini. So it should be a very interesting tablet. Uh, let's open this up. Uh, as with the Tetlast, this was purchased from Banggood. Now, Banggood does not ship products in their original packaging. Uh, they claim for protection, but uh, yeah, I kind of wish they did. You know, if they maybe just wrapped it around, wrapped the original packaging with some foam or something. So, let's get rid of that. And now let's cut this styrofoam container open. I do like their yellow tape. I really like it. So, she got into that fairly easily. Let's see what we have. I don't want to tilt this. So, there is the tablet. This right away is feeling very nice. So we got a little information padlet here. What's this? So let's see. Accessories. We have this I'm assuming is a USB type C cable. Yes it is. There we go. You can see the non-directional end, which is going to be very nice. Uh, this here is the, of course, the USB adapter. It's actually, let's let that focus, the Xiaomi brand, which is a nice bonus. Two milliamp, 2,000 milliamps. Quite compact. Nice that the prongs folded in, but that's okay. At least it does come with a North, Amer North American plug. And in the little information packlet, what do we have? <laughs> Not much. Literally a card, warranty registration that is obviously not going to happen. And something else in Chinese doesn't help. But that's okay. So let's take a quick look at this. This, wow, all right, it, this feels solid. This is thin. It's by far the thinnest Windows tablet you can get at 6.95 millimeters. Uh, it's aluminum unibody. Um, it has a good, a good solid heft to it without being too heavy. It sort of has a high quality feel to it. Oh wow, nice and stiff. You're definitely not going to be easily bending this. Um, and so for now, I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to charge it up. 
I'm going to apply probably about 24 hours worth of Windows updates. You know there's tons of them to do. And then we'll come back, take a look at the physical aspects of it, and uh, do a little bit of poking around. So it's been about 24 hours since I unboxed the MePad 2. As a nice bonus, I did not have to install as many Windows updates as I thought I would. Uh, it turns out it already comes with the 1511 update pre-installed, which took hours of time on these low-end tablets to install and the other ones I've done. So that was nice. Uh, it also comes entirely in English. In fact, on the unit I received, the only option was British English and American English. So that's nice. Uh, let's take a look at the physical design. Uh, if you're seeing visions of an iPad mini, you're really pretty darn close. Um, it's got a nice black bezel on the front. There's a, it's a 7.9 inch screen, 2048 by 1536 resolution. Uh, it's a sharp panel and it's uh, OGS, which means it's a one glass solution, so there's no air gap between the panel and the glass surface. Uh, speaking of the glass, it's nice and slick feeling. Um, I cannot tell if it's a Gorilla or a Dragon Trail glass or something like that. Um, it's not advertised as such on this model, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to be, but it does look pretty good. Uh, Feature-wise, on the front we have here, a small 5 megapixel front-facing camera. Uh, there's also an ambient light sensor right next to it. Uh, over here in this corner, there's also a small LED that comes on when it's plugged in. Uh, it does not turn off when it's done charging, so I'm not really sure what the point of it is. So if we go around, on this side, there is absolutely nothing. Totally blank. On the bottom, we have the USB type C connector, USB 3, and two screws to hold it together. On the right edge, it's pretty plain as well. There are three very skinny metal buttons here. This is, of course, power and volume down and up. And then on the top, we have a standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And on the back, uh, this, incidentally, is the gold finish, which is actually a lot nicer than I was expecting. I guess most would probably call it champagne. Um, it's sort of a matte aluminum uh, silver with a yellow tinge. It's actually really quite classy. Uh, I'm normally not a fan of gold-colored equipment, but this is quite nice. It would pass as silver uh, for most people. Uh, up here, this is an 8-megapixel autofocus camera. And behind it here we have uh, a microphone and over here another small microphone. So a dual microphone array. And on the bottom we have two speakers. So stereo speakers. They are remarkably good. This is a tiny tablet but they sound really quite good. Way better than the ones uh, that came on the Tetlas tablet. So I'm really happy with the speaker quality. Uh, now this ugly sticker thing. Why don't we get rid of that? That just comes off. And there we go. You see it's a very nice simple plain back. Just has the the Mi logo. Very understated design, not at all tacky. This is definitely the slimmest Windows tablet you will find. It's under seven millimeters thick. Most of them are around eight, nine, ten millimeters. It's very slender. It is actually thinner, believe it or not, than an iPad Mini 2. Uh, the Mini 4 is probably a little bit slimmer than this because it's officially rated at six. But actually, why don't we do a size comparison with the Mini. So here we have, here is our Mini 2 Apple. You see side by side, it's really not that much of a difference, is there? Just put them on top. Let's 
believe it or not, the Mini is actually marginally wider than the Mi Pad. It's by a few, a few millimeters. I think I measured it. The uh, Mini is about 135 and the Mi Pad's about 131 in length. I'd say the, they're pretty much identical. There's no change there. Uh, you can see the thickness. Doesn't look like much of a difference, but there is. Uh, I have a pair of calipers here. Let's uh, turn them on. Hello, I hit on. Hello. So, as it turns out, my caliper's battery died in about the last 15 minutes. What awesome timing. So, you're just going to have to take my word for it. But the iPad Mini 2 measured to 7.4 millimeters thick. And the Mi Pad measured to 6.8 or 6.9. It was a little halfway between. So it is slightly thinner, slightly narrower, and about the same length. Now considering that this is a full Windows tablet running Intel x86 architecture, actually 64-bit, that's pretty good. I'm quite impressed. So, first things, let's turn it on. Hold the power button for a couple seconds. And there's the Mi Lodo. And Windows 10. Let me turn off some of these lights so we can actually see what we're doing. And here it is. This is a great LCD screen. Um, it's quite bright, even at 25 and 50% brightness levels. Uh, something I did not mention earlier are these three illuminated buttons along the side. This one down here brings up Cortana. Yeah, let's get rid of her. This one in the middle brings up the Windows, it's, it's the Windows button basically. Of course we're already on the main menu. And this one operates as a back button, uh, in which is very useful in Edge. Because if you don't know, Edge is very not tablet oriented. It uh, has no swipe gestures for going back or forwards. So you will be finding this uh, back button quite useful. So. Generally, on normal 2D usage, it's quite responsive and fluid. Let's, uh, let's load up something. News, maybe. text is gorgeous. Uh, the high resolution, this is the retina screen equivalent. Um, it's basically the same 7.8 inch diagonal screen that they use on an iPad mini and it really looks just as good. Um, I have no complaints. It's pretty good viewing angle. The brightness does decrease a little more than some tablets I've seen but if you notice you can still see it. Text does not disappear we go to this side. Notice the tiles are a little bigger in portrait orientation. These 8 inch tablets you'll probably use in portrait more often than not. Uh, and that's good. Uh, it's 4 by 3 so it's not too narrow uh, when you're going sideways, like, or when you're going uh, vertically oriented. You still get a good amount of stuff on the side. Um, Xiaomi does not 
install much applications. In fact, there is absolutely nothing with their brand name or MePad or anything on this tablet whatsoever. You might even call it um, almost a Microsoft Signature Edition. The only stuff that's installed that I don't think is stock would be uh, Candy Crush, Soda, Sega. I don't know why they include that, but it's there. Uh, it looks like it also has Minecraft. Uh, I don't know if Solitaire is stock or not, but it's there. And really, there's really nothing else. There's 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 no Chinese apps. Uh, there's no settings, utilities, or anything like that. It's just pretty empty, which is good because there's nothing to slow you down. Everything seems to work well. I've had no issues with the um, with the microphone. The speakers sound great, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, the Wi-Fi, although it's a little weak right where I am right now, I'm in. I'm in the uh, furthest part of my house where I'm filming this, and a lot of tablets I've tested, uh, particularly the Tetlas, couldn't even maintain a connection here. Um, if I just turn around and go about 10 feet the other direction, uh, I can get a full 80 megabit benchmark on uh, speed test, which is as good as any tablet I currently own. So I'm quite happy with the Wi-Fi performance. I've had no issues with limited performance, uh, limited mode, or it dropping out and refusing to reconnect. So let's have a listen to something here. Uh, I don't know what I'll use, and I should know it comes at the top of the list, alphabetically. Any second now. Ooh, pop-ups. Now that's at full volume. They're actually quite loud. They do, however, lose quite a bit of volume when you set them on a table. But you can still hear them. They don't totally disappear. There is a quite decent attempt made to produce some mid-tones. It's not all just harsh trebles. There's some actual fidelity there. I could I could see using, uh, watching a movie on this, playing games. It's at least as good as uh, an iPad mini, I say. It, very close at minimum. So let's try something else. Uh, how about Candy Crush? even louder than the last game. In fact, I think I will turn it down a smidge. Chocolate. So... You'll find that the... Uh, uh, the tablet, even at full retina resolution, is okay for games like this. Please don't criticize my Candy Crush playing ability. However, the picture, the outlook isn't quite so rosy for games like, like I just showed you, Asphalt 8. Um, it is not really playable. So let me load Asphalt up again so you can get an idea of how it plays at 2048 by 1536. It's really not doable. Uh, the frame rate is too low and the tablet heats up quite quickly. Uh, speaking of heating up, it's not as bad as I was expecting. I think the aluminum case helps dissipate heat fairly well. Uh, but. But um, you're probably going to want to turn it down to 1600 by 1200 or lower. Uh, there are quite a few resolution choices available. Um, there's, I think, 1400 by 1050. That's not a bad choice. 1200, 1280 by 960. 
Now you can see this is just medium quality level and it's uh, it's you know I mean a playable in a pinch but the frame rate is not where I'd like it to be. Oops, not easy to play at this angle. Definitely not easy to play at this angle. Now, with that said, you can play certain games that are not too demanding without any issue. For example, this one plays really rather nicely. Professor Fluff has been working on creating the cutest animal ever. So you see, this one is perfectly fine. And now let's take a quick look at SSD performance. The Mi Pad 2 comes with a Toshiba 64 gig uh, module. And here we're scoring it with a uh, crystal disk mark. It's an older version, but that way you can compare it easier with a lot of other tablet benchmarks, including our previous ones. Uh, speaking of previous ones, are going to pop up on the screen the Tetlast, the Asus, and the ThinkPad results. Uh, if you compare them, uh, you'll see that overall it's a pretty good score. Um, read speeds are quite decent, not quite as fast as we got for the Tetlas, but the write speeds are much better. And I think it's a better balance between read and write performance, uh, plus the 4K speeds are nothing to sneeze at there. Uh, I think overall it was a pretty good choice. Uh, the performance feels as snappy as one can expect on a device like this. So definitely the SSD won't be letting you down. Uh, of note, remember, you cannot expand the storage on this. It comes with 64 gigs. There is no micro SD card slot. So you're going to be stuck with 64 gigs. And now let's take a quick look at performance. Uh, here we have the Passmark rating for the Mi Pad 2. Uh, scored a pretty respectable score of 779.9. Uh, that may not seem particularly high, but it is for a tablet of uh, this power and capacity. Um, it's definitely the highest scoring 8-inch Windows tablet I've so far tested. Uh, handily beat out the ThinkPad 8 with its uh, Z3795 CPU. Um, and definitely beat out uh, the Tetlast with its Z8300, which is the little little brother to the Z8500. Uh, so let's take a look more at the results. Let's not do that actually. Uh, so we can see uh, the CPU mark is 1867, not too bad. The graphics mark 150.8 3D of 297.1. That's definitely a lot higher than the previous uh, Bay Trail tablets got. Uh, the Cherry Trail is definitely, it's a little, I think it's actually a little lower in 2D graphics than the Bay Trail, but Cherry Trail definitely it sells in 3D. And you can look at memory and disk marks there as well. So, final thoughts. Uh, battery life. It specifies a 6190 milliamp hour cell, which compares to the lower end tablets that come with 3300 to 4200 milliamp hour. So it's a good size battery, but of course it's a higher resolution screen and the CPU is more powerful, so it will take more power to run overall. Uh, they also specify four to five hours video usage. Now as a test last night, I set up um, a 720p movie to play back on a loop. I did it in airplane mode and with um, battery, with the screen brightness set to 25%, which is really still quite usable in moderate ambient lighting. And after five hours of doing that, uh, it still had 35% battery left with an estimated runtime of 2 hours and 38 minutes. So I would estimate between 7 and 7.5 seven and hours uh, based on that test. Uh, of course, that will vary depending on the complexity of the movie being played and 
anything else you do and uh, whether you have Wi-Fi enabled, etc. Uh, speaking of Wi-Fi, the connectivity and um, expandability of this isn't really that great. Uh, there is no micro SD card slot. There is Wi-Fi built in, but there's no 3G or LTE. Uh, there is no micro HDMI output. There is only the USB 3 Type-C connector on the bottom and a headphone jack on the top. That is really it. Uh, but for most people, I don't think that'll be much of a problem. Now, if you haven't been able to tell, I really like this tablet. It's a really good design. It's very thin. It's well constructed. It feels nice in the hand. I have not had any, any issues with it overheating. Although to be fair, I haven't pushed it that hard yet, but it really has not gotten hot to the touch. And I, um, I will wager that the aluminum casing will help dissipate some of the heat as well. The accelerometer on this is really good. I have had no issues with calibration. In fact, it's one of the best Windows tablets I've had for accuracy. Uh, I believe it's only about 0.1 degrees off, which is on the quality par with uh, an iPad mini. Uh, some of the other tablets I've had, are they, they've all ranged between 1 and 4 degrees off. Uh, so, as I said, I think this is a great little tablet. It's currently priced at $280 US delivered from Banggood. If you compare that with the other inexpensive Chinese tablets, it's definitely a lot more money, nearly three times as much as some of them. Um, and it's honestly one of the nicest you can get. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.